The Apple Vision Pro is a major leap forward in the world of spatial computing and augmented reality. Right now, we are on the ground floor of what Apple's vision of the future looks like. Will we be living in a digitally augmented world in the next five years? Will we be tossing out our monitors and using laptops with no screens, all because our display is on our face? Maybe. But for now, the Apple Vision is a fun device and a blast to use. It's essentially a personal Mac that you can literally step into. Today on Macintosh Librarian, we're going to be diving into something truly special to me. What if I told you you can take the classic Macintosh into the virtual world with us, using our eyes and hands to navigate Macintosh System 7? What if you could relive those classic 90s Macintosh experiences like Oregon Trail, Dark Castle, Glider, Kid Picks, or even just the original Mac Paint, all on a massive screen that can follow us wherever we go? Thanks to the Apple Vision Pro and the power of emulation running natively on the Vision Pro, we can do this all and more. The Apple Vision allows us to easily transport ourselves into different spaces and even look back in time to old memories. I think running a classic Mac emulator on Vision OS is an amazing bridge into the past. We're using Apple's latest cutting edge spatial computing technology to take us back to the 1980s. Uh, hey, Ms. Fox, what's with the jelly bean on your face? This is Apple's all new Apple Vision Pro, Apple's first spatial computing headset. Uh, okay, looks like VR to me. But Apple prefers to call them spatial computing rather than VR. Oh, okay. So, uh, what you gonna do with it? Well, with the power of emulation, Xcode, and a little bit of nerd power, we can get the classic Macintosh emulator, Mini VMac, running on our Apple Vision Pro without the need of a MacBook. This will be running entirely on the Vision Pro. Entirely in the Apple Vision? The future is here! Imagine what folks in the 1990s would have thought about this. They would have gone nuts! I could have watched Reboot in 3D! Or 3D, er. So, let's dive right in and load up Mini VMAC on our Apple Vision Pro. The future is now! Let's get Mini VMAC installed in our headset. First, we'll need a few things. A Mac, Xcode, and an Apple developer account. Aw oh, man, we gotta write the whole emulator? That's a whole lot of homework. Don't worry, Mackie. We won't need to dig that deep into the actual code. Thanks to the amazing work by Jesus Alvarez, aka Zydeco on GitHub, we have a working version of the best 68K-based Macintosh emulator, Mini VMAC, ported over to iOS. Let's go ahead and clone the Mini VMAC 4 iOS source code from GitHub, along with its dependencies. I'll just go into the terminal, make a new directory for our project, then git clone the repository. I'll also download the necessary libraries and submodules using this command here. Now we can go ahead and load the project in Xcode. We can then change the team and bundle identifier to match our own custom settings under the mini VMAC target under the signing and capabilities tab. And before we can compile it and send it over to our Apple Vision, we need to enable developer mode under settings on our Apple Vision Pro. So come with me to the virtual world for a moment and let's enable it. Okay, so here we are in the virtual world. Hi, Maggie, how do I look? Hmm, still looks like you have a big jelly bean on your face. A futuristic jelly bean, though. So once we press the crown button on the right side of the headset, we'll get our menu. Let's hop over to Settings, then Privacy and Security, and scroll all the way down to Developer Mode. And let's enable that. After the Vision reboots, we'll have it enabled. Now, all we have to do is compile our code and send it over to the Apple Vision. Then we're only a few steps away from living our best 90s life in the virtual world. Once it's compiled, it will automatically launch on your Apple Vision. So now, once Mini VMAC launches, it'll complain that it can't find VMAC ROM. So what is a ROM? Well, that's essentially the heart of a classic Macintosh. It's the core code that tells the Mac what to do on boot, where the memory addresses are, and what type of computer this is. Without the ROM, the computer simply doesn't have the instructions to start booting. Ooh, ooh, I know. You can use my ROM that we totally legally own a copy of because I'm an SC30. <laughs> that does make our lives a lot easier, Mackie. Now, 
thanks to us using a multitude of SCSI disks and emulators. We'll have a Macintosh hard drive image pre-built that contains our favorite build of macOS 755, preloaded with a lot of our favorite games. So once we have them in iCloud, just head back over to the virtual world, load up files, navigate to our ROM and disk image directory. Then we can click share and send it over to mini vmac. Now that that's loaded up, let's go ahead and launch into the mini vmac settings just to be sure that this is set up properly. To do this, there are a few gestures that can get us to the settings menu. Since this is an iPad build, we need to treat it like an iPad. So we can bring it close using two fingers and then swipe right. This will bring up the settings. We can also use two hands and tap both our thumb and index fingers together and then swipe to the right. This simulates two touches on the iPad and swipes right and brings up the settings menu. Okay, now we're cooking. Let's go ahead and go to settings and set that to 8x. This will be good for most games and apps and allow our Mac to boot up faster and it will cut down on those loading times. Let's make sure we set the keyboard layout to US since this is a US keyboard. Display scaling, I recommend setting this to linear. You'll get a fair blend of pixels without too much blurring. Okay, so let's go ahead and choose our machine. In this case, I'm gonna be emulating a Macintosh 2. This is a machine that has more options for resolution and can let us use a full eight megabytes of memory. As far as resolution goes, feel free to play with this. I personally like 640 by 480 since this is a sweet spot for playing classic Mac games. Aw, are we almost done? I thought you said this was easy. We are almost done. Now we just have to go to the disk button at the top. So simply look at it, tap our fingers together, then load up the disk image that we want to run. In this case, I'm gonna load up Color Classic 755 disk image. We can just look at this disk image with our eyes and then hold our fingers together and a sub menu will pop up. Then we can click insert. Ooh, I see it, it's booting. Now we've finally run macOS System 755 running on our Apple Vision Pro. All we have to do is get out of the settings window by clicking cancel. Thanks to Jesus, he's implemented a touch mouse control scheme to allow someone to use a touch screen, like an iPad to use mini vMac. However, thankfully for us, this translates wonderfully to the Vision Pro, allowing us to use our eyes and the tap of our fingers to navigate the OS. All we need to do is look at the icon and tap. So let's look at the Apple icon on the top of the screen and tap our fingers together. And boom, it's just like running a native version of macOS system 7.5 running on our Apple Vision Pro. So to load up some games, all I have to do is Let's go ahead and make this giant window. Just click on Games Mackie by just looking at it. So I just have to look at Games Mackie and then double tap with my fingers like this. Doot, doot, and then it opens and I have a giant window. Um, let's see if we can run. Ooh, we got a lot of stuff here. Let's try Kidfix. Awesome. Kidfix version two in giant form. Let's make sure we got everything hooked up. This kid picks belongs to Mackie. Cool. So now we can just draw by moving our hand around. That is so cool. Let's draw something cute. Oh, let's make it a sun. Oh my glob, that's awesome. Let's fill the sky in with a nice gradient blue. Oh, that's cool, it's perfect. And then we can fill the ground in with a nice textured grass. Let's see. I think that looks like grass. All right, we're gonna grab here just by looking at it and moving our finger and grabbing and dragging it down. Oh yeah, there we go. Self-portrait, self-portrait. Ooh, what's that? Spaghetti line. Oh yeah, it like, goes crazy. I forgot about that. Oh yeah, this one. That's so cool. Now it's a 90s wallpaper. So I've tried Doom and Doom doesn't work on mini VMAC. I actually need a different emulator, which I may give you a little preview of later, but we can play some other games like Sim City. So now I can just put Sim City on the wall, really, really big. And I can, I can cover your face. <laughs> oh, and that's a really cool part. All I have to do is look at the arrow and it goes down and look at the top and it goes up. Ooh, 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 I know which one is cool. Happy Land. 
Up end. Tapping our fingers together. And let's put a monster in there. The monster's attacking the capital. In VR. This is really cool. Now we have, ooh, my hands. Yeah, you can see through my hands. That's really cool. It's like it's actually there. Apple did a really good job of being able to put these windows make them feel like they're actually in space. You know, they you can see your you can see the stuff going on. You can see this monster attacking the city through my hands, running this old SimCity 2000 from the 90s. Let's load up a fun game that I love, which is Glyphic. Glyphic. Let's load up Glyphic. Not that one. <laughs> Bungie. Bungie made. Nope. <laughs> Let's see. You get. Hold on. Oh man, it's like it's pong. Oh, it's pong backwards. This is what Bungie made. This is what. This is uh what came before Halo. This is pretty cool. Oh crap. <laughs> awesome. Now we have Glyphah running in Vision Pro, which is pretty cool. We can make it giant Glyphah. We can scooch it back. Make it really big off in the distance. That's pretty cool. I don't even need this laptop anymore. Cool. Awesome. Now we got, uh, let's go to file and start a new game. So to control it, you just have to tap and then look of where you want your bird to go. And then you can just tap to flap and it's only left and right. So it's a little hard to control, but of course this definitely this is a game from the 80s, uh, probably not meant to be played in, in this virtual world, but yeah, this is why this is really cool. We get to bring old games into the new spatial computing era. Hey, what's that noise? I hear people talking. Oh, hey, it's Shufflepuck Cafe on the mountain. Awesome. Okay, so <laughs> to play Shufflepuck. You usually use a mouse and you push it forward and you move it around. It's kind of like a, it's air hockey essentially. But now since we don't have a mouse, we have our hands. What we're going to be doing is using our hands to control Shuffle Pet Cafe. All right, I'm going to grab it again and shuffle. Crap. It's my best run. Oh, that was my best run yet. Have you ever played Star Wars on the moon? Just have to look and tap, and I think I can shoot them. Oh yeah. Oh man. Oh, this is cool. Oh, shoot fireballs. How do I do that? A uh, little. Ah, little, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, not that. Not that. Go down. Well, I am playing Star Wars on the moon. Oh, that's really cool. Oh wow. Uh, where am I going? <laughs> Ouch. Ooh, it's the Earth. That's really cool. Hi, Earth. I know the Apple Vision Pro is new, and we're still trying to figure out the best way to use it. But I can guarantee that retro enthusiasts are going to find plenty of fun things to do with it. People are going to be porting 3D games to this. It'll be great for modeling in 3D space. And I'm sure the academics will have their fun with it too. It's exciting to see Apple release a new product category. This is just like the release of the first iMac, the iPod, or even the first Macintosh. I'm hoping that in 10 to 20 years from now, the spatial computing concept will be as ubiquitous as the iPhone. And Apple is typically not the first company to enter a particular product space but they are known for taking an existing concept and making it more accessible for everyone. So I'm very excited to see what the next year will bring us in terms of Apple Vision software. This is just the beginning of a new Apple era. And it's a new era in classic video games. <laughs> well, thanks for watching today's episode of Macintosh Librarian. And thanks to all the viewers like you for supporting us on Patreon. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye. Da -da -da -da. Okay.
can see your eyes. You can see my eyes? 